Hello again, everybody. Steve Politi from the Star Ledger, joined as always by Rutgers beat writer Tom Lucci. And Tom, I got to say, your prediction last week picking Morgan State to beat the Scarlet Knights just a little bit off. It, it seemed like it, it seemed like it was a little bit off. I mean, it could was you a maybe bit explain off. to the the loyal viewers what happened? I was happened trying there. to have some fun. I don't know if people caught it at the end. I was saying that I had picked Rutgers the first three games to win, and they lost games they were favored in. So I was going to mm -hmm. see if I could continue the streak of being O for the season. I, I know see. people missed that point. It was just trying to have some fun. Uh, and uh, we got the angry emails, and uh, I know we got some responses from I, people who couldn't believe good. that I picked Morgan State, but it was done tongue-in-cheek. Well, as the cliffhanger, we'll save your prediction for the West Virginia game at the end. Now, of course, the Scarlet Knights go down to Morgantown, a place they haven't won since, what, 1812? Never. They, they've never won a Morgantown. Never, never. This is, I have to think that this game can really change the season in a lot of ways because they've never yeah. won there. It would give them a first Big East win. They haven't beaten West Virginia since 1994. It'll give them the opportunity to, to say, well, look, we're doing something positive. We've accomplished something we haven't done yet in the program. I mean, this is a I, I agree 100%. Game. It's a make-or-break game to start a make-or-break month. I, I think it's pretty – it basically comes down to that. The, the one and three start, forget about it for now. It's over. There's nothing they can do about it. It didn't impact their league uh, title hopes. So – that begins against West Virginia on Saturday, and it continues this whole month. I mean, it, it, the thing to me that's, that's interesting, and you have to be a little frustrated if you're a Rutgers fan, is if Rutgers had just come through the uh, opening stretch 3-1 and one and was playing well, you'd be looking at a stretch right now of October thinking, well, you know what, West Virginia's lost tw twice. They're not a top-10 team anymore. Cincinnati's down to its third-team quarterback. Connecticut then comes into Rutgers. They don't have their starting quarterback. And Pittsburgh was supposed to be the best running team in the, in the Big East. They can't run the ball. So you're looking at four. If Rutgers is playing well, you're looking at four great opportunity games. But the way Rutgers is playing, you can't count on any of those games being a win, especially with three of them being on the road. And we're talking about going to a place and beating West Virginia. Uh, you know, can they do it? Or can they stop Pat White? I mean, you, know, you talked to Pat White the other day. Uh, here's a guy who's a little banged up, but, you know. He's had some great, I mean, they've had some great offensive performances against the Scarlet Knights over the years. Yeah, they have, and, uh, and some of them have been kind of uh, ugly, too. The 80-7 to seven game right, down there in West Virginia and Morgantown was, uh, was a bad one. Uh, you know what, last year was an ugly one. You know, and Pat White, that was really the first time Rutgers saw Pat White because when he was a redshirt freshman, uh, I think Adam Bednarik was still a quarterback, mm -hmm. so Pat only got in for a couple plays. So last year was Rutgers' real first exposure to him. He gained, uh, you know, 150-some-odd y yards, threw for another 100 yards, and had his usual Pat White game. But, uh, and that was kind of a lopsided game, and Rutgers didn't play well at all. So I I'm interested to see now, especially since they're not only using Pat White as a quarterback, they're taking Jarrett Brown, the backup who beat Rutgers two yes. years ago, cost Rutgers the BCS bid, uh, and they're lining them up in the same backfield. So that's a kind of an interesting look to see what, how Rutgers deals with that. So that's going to be tough for the Rutgers defense, obviously. Meanwhile, the Rutgers offense, if you look at what they've done this year, my biggest frustration watching this team is you see a guy like Kenny Britt, who I know is, is an NFL first, second rounder type talent. For the fact that he has not been the breakout performer I thought he would be, I think that Rutgers thought he would be, you talk to him. What I mean, what do you see the problem being, and how is this kid responding to well, it? Well, I think he's gotten, he's getting a lot more attention. I don't think there's any question. And um, Mike Teal told me at practice this week. He said last year there was some a little bit of knowledge about Kenny Britt and, and Tyquan Underwood coming into the season. People knew they were talented, they were good players, but they weren't drawing the attention that they are now. And and they and Mike said last year they were able to line up Kenny, who was six foot four, right. against a lot of smaller corners, and they were able to get those big plays. They're not able to do that now. And in addition, Kenny's getting double coverage. So Greg Schiano has said this week, and Mike said, that they're trying to move Kenny around a little bit more to get him free. But they need to get him loose so that he can loosen up the defense and stretch the defense a little bit. And, uh, you know, he's just got so much talent and so much ability and big playability, and they haven't gotten out of him this year. I mean, he's averaging 12 and a half yards a catch. At least there have been some positive offensively. you got Jordan Brooks. He's running the ball well. Uh, Mike Teal had a good game last week. I mean, we, are we seeing maybe something positive coming out of this offense going into this game, or is it just Morgan State? And, yeah, you know. it's just Morgan State. We'll know, we'll know more Saturday. Right. I mean, we'll have a better idea. If, if they perform on the road well uh, and Teal comes through with a big game, they can straighten out their season. It's that simple. All right, so you're on 4 Here it is, the big prediction. Who do, I, who do you take? I'm going with Rutgers having a breakout game. I'm picking Rutgers to win for the first time ever in Morgantown. 27-17, big breakout game. Mike Teal plays well, the running game excels, and they keep Pat White in check. Wow, I, so in other words, more bad news, Rutgers fans. 0-4 Tom Lucci is now on your side again. I'm going to take West Virginia, if that makes you feel better, 38-17. That's it for this week. Signing off. Thanks for watching.